What's up, Cougar fans? Troy Prattley signing into the first Coaches Weekly edition for the fall of 2024. I'm here with head women's soccer coach Eddie Garza. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to get to do this with you for the first time. I've done volleyball, tennis, softball. This is going to be my first Soccer Coaches Weekly, so I'm really excited to follow your team throughout the fall. Before we get into this upcoming season, I want to give the fans um, and parents and maybe the people who don't know necessarily what goes on from the time that your season ends in the fall of 23 until your season begins here in the fall of 2024. Yeah, so... For the players that are returning, they go into, you know, we, we, we in essence start preparing for the next year, right? Uh, they start to understand what positions they're, uh, they're going to play. And then uh, we, we start our lift off lifting, uh, sorry, our off season lifting. And they put get together and do a lot of captain's practices and things like that. Then we get into our non-traditional and that's where we are more individualized on the things that we want to improve on, whether it's like, you know, technical abilities, fitness and things like that. And it's it just like the spring is to get us prepared for the summer um, and to, so that we're ready for the fall. So there's a lot of, uh, it's a long process. There's a lot of time, but, you know, we, 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 t we use it to just improve. And I think the players took advantage of it. And, you know, I'm looking forward to see uh, how it translates this year. So let's talk about some of those players. You've got a good mix of returners and new faces. It was 14 new faces, I think, to your squad this year. Um, but then, you know, plenty of talent back from last year's team. So what have you seen early on in camp from, from both the new players and also the returning players and how that mesh has, has kind of happened here in the fall? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the returners, uh, some of them I did recruit. And... The, the ones I didn't, you know, they've been under me for their, this is their third year. And I think they bring a good foundation and a good core. And uh, they, they've, uh, they understand how things run and uh, they've, they've stepped up in the leadership role, which you always like, uh, love to see as a coach. And uh, that allowed a good acclimation period for the freshmen. So the freshmen are fitting right in. And I think that's part of like the, of the leadership again from the returners. The freshmen have also, you know, are giving us different looks, uh, different uh, skill sets that, you know, I'm excited for, to see it for myself, but obviously for the fans to witness as well. You know, I think uh, together, the, the returning core and the newcomers will like really uh, give CUC a different look than, than what we've been used to. And let's talk about kind of heading into games. You know, last week you got to go to Clark and, and scrimmage there and what did you see from that scrimmage you know sometimes that's a lot of trying to put the pieces and see you know which group works best together and kind of how that all works itself out what did you see out of that scrimmage that, that gives you the confidence to say you know we're moving in the right direction we're gonna have a, a good season this year yeah in a nutshell the returners have broken a lot of the habits that we've been working to break you know um we've uh we've we have a core of how we want to attack and how we want to defend and and they ha have set that foundation, so I don't have to reteach it. I just have to like uh, freshen up on it. Uh, so I think they have a good understanding, and uh, you know we're seeing the the, the pictures that be, we've been wanting to uh, work for, which is more possession, more, more of the ball, and naturally in any sport is finding ways to win. So for us, scoring opportunities and going a goal and trying to uh, you know find ways to win. And looking for a win tomorrow in your, your team's first game, you've got Augustana. What do you got to do to come away with a victory there? Yeah, I'm, uh, the, the players just need to commit to believing in, the, in themselves, applying the things that we've been working on, trusting that process. You know, all buzzwords, but for the most part, uh, it's going to come down to consistency and execution. Um, we have a very talented group, so they have to trust that they can make the right decisions in critical moments. But I also feel, uh, you know, taking some risks. I think we've been very conservative in areas uh, the past two years. You know, I would consider ourselves a little bit more defensive minded. And we, we, we did really well in that aspect. But I think this year it's like taking that next step again because of the new core and the gained confidence, I think that's what uh, will help us get that result tomorrow. 
And I'm just curious from a coach's perspective, do you look at any of the preseason polling and how that shakes out, or is that something that's out of sight, out of mind, we don't worry about it, or, or does the team kind of look at that and use it as, as fuel almost? Preseason polling is has has little to do with anything, mainly because it's based off uh, their the coaches' rankings, mm-hmm. what they submit to their sports information directors. Um, every team loses players, every team gains new players, so it's hard to predict how the actual um, season will lay out. I'm fine where we're at. You know, we can kind of coast under the radar and surprise some people, but um, yeah, I, I we don't pay too much attention to it. It's it's a, for me, it's a, a quick email, just keep it as is yeah. and move on. Yeah, and, and before we wrap up here, I'm you know also curious about this, very different than the sport that I play in football where we play one game you know every seven days. Your team's gonna go on a stretch here early where you're gonna play five games in, in just nine days. And so how does that recovery time look like where you're trying to forget about uh, a loss or a good win um, and then recover back mentally and physically in a taxing sport you know, where there's a lot of back and forth and your legs can get tired and, and so forth to be able to keep going and play that many games in a row one after another and just stay fresh mentally and physically? Yeah. Uh, it, it's going to come down to part of it is rotation. Um, so having the depth and strength to, you know, uh, give people a rest in those games because they maybe need no more recovery. And I also feel uh, my team has the mindset of like one day at a time. So today we were focusing on training, making sure if this was the last time we touched the ball, it was the best that we could have it. And I thought they did really well. Going into Augustana, you know, we focus on them. We're not thinking uh, of, of our next opponent. I didn't know we went on a, uh, in nine days, five games, but I mean, that's the reality of, of, uh, of our schedule. I like to front load the, the non-conference, so I don't play non-conference in between conference, mm-hmm. but uh, my planning is also is taking into consideration working with the athletic training staff uh, that you know are great and assisting our athletes and like managing their workload. So a lot of the responsibility is on me. Part of the responsibility is on the athletes where they have to communicate. But for the most part, is uh, you know like every other team, you have to make tough decisions that you know aren't favorable but it's for the best in looking at the season as a whole rather than game a game absolutely well we look forward to you know seeing the season play out and tomorrow and sunday especially so good luck in those games thank you for more information on cuc athletics and women's soccer you can head to www.cucougars.com troy prattley signing off the cougar sports network roll cougs